Back again with some more yoga. Hopefully I hit record and a little more prepared this time. So I'm not just stealing your time. And uh, we'll start. Ashtanga Yoga, the eight limbs of yoga. Eventually if all this repetition, those things uh, get stuck in your mind, you'll remember them. Also helps me doing all this repetition. There's yama, your external morals, niyama, internal morals, asana, the positions, pranayama, breath control, pratyahara, withdrawing yourself from the external distra distractions, uh, 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 dhyana, focusing in your concentration, dharana, unbroken concentration, and samadhi. Uh, bliss, enlightenment. So then we started on the yamas. We did ahimsa, non-harming, non-violence, satya, honesty, truthfulness, uh, asteya, which is what we'll go in today, non-stealing, brahmacharya, walk like God, aparigraha, non-hoarding. So, asteya, non-stealing. So simple, not stealing, uh, not stealing items, don't steal from a convenience store when you get gas, don't pocket some little thing at the cash register, simple things like that, just not stealing items. Oh, but I'm going to take this opportunity to say that before you can really start to find a, a path to yoga. You need three basic things, water, food, and shelter. And if you don't have these things, it's difficult, way more difficult to try and be a better person, to find yoga. And if you're having to steal, to say, steal food, to survive your basic, your basic sustenance to be able to live, Something's wrong with your path, and you need to change that. And there are people out there that will help you. So, after you have those three things, which I bet most people who have the internet can take care of themselves in food, water, and shelter. So, back to, uh, back to Estea. Non-stealing. Uh, oh my... So easily, not stealing material items, not stealing from stores, from work, from houses, from people. And it's not just money or diamonds or gemstones or items. It's not just stealing items. It's also stealing incorporeal things like time. Say, uh, say you're one who talks a lot and uh, you're having a conversation with a person but you're not giving them time to speak back to you. You're wasting their time and, not, and yours. First off, you're not having a real conversation if you're the only one talking and you're not getting anything out of it besides hearing yourself reiterate the things you probably already know. And you're wasting their time by them probably already hearing what you've said and not give, letting them have an opportunity to agree with you or to add to the conversation. So when you're, we'll just stick with this talking. When you're talking to somebody, when you're having a discussion with somebody where there is this back and forth, you got to keep in mind that uh, not only you need time, and that person needs to give you time also to speak, but you have to give them time to speak also. That's an easy example of how you could steal someone's time. But, um, hate using that word, um, but keep losing myself. I should probably wear glasses when I uh, have a little piece of paper in front of me and I'm trying to read off it. But, uh, oh, man. <laughs> Oh, right. There are 
are situations in which people do come to you to uh, to be an audience, and in that way you can speak, and you're not stealing their time with the fact that you're not letting them answer you because they came there to listen to you. Take YouTube for example. It's obvious no one's going to interrupt me because, well, it's kind of hard to interrupt a recorded video. But with that, you don't want to waste the people's time by giving them something that's nothing. So in the fact that they are your audience and they're captive and watching you, but don't waste their time when they're watching you. Maybe plan ahead, have a point of where you're going. It's not just YouTube, everything, whatever. Just take YouTube as an example since that's what we're on. If there's no time wasted in your recording, there's going to be less time wasted for the person watching it. And they're going to feel better about watching the thing and maybe get more out of it because they're not being bored or feel like, oh, oh let's just uh, click, go back, start over. We're done with that. So there you are, not stealing time. Another um, incorporeal thing that you can steal is peace. So like peace, like uh, easy example of someone sleeping and you're there making all kinds of racket and not letting them sleep when obviously they want to. So then, but then uh, we can go to, if you're first starting meditation, if you want to find a, uh, the least distracting area you can to do it. And if there's somebody playing loud music or, in, or coming in and asking you a question about something, leaving, coming back in, asking you another question, you're trying to do this, that person is trying, stealing your peace. And likewise, you shouldn't do that to someone else. There's, a, there's more I had written on peace here. Let me just see if I can find it. Ah, here we go. There's another example. Someone's on a bench in a park, reading a book. Person comes up beside them, sits next to them, asks them a question. Nothing wrong with this. I'm not saying don't go up and start talking to random people. By no means stop that. Do that all the time. But you have to be aware when you do this, read the other person's reactions. If they answer you and don't really feel engaged in some type of conversation or don't want to be engaged in a conversation, let them be. Let them read their book. Let them have their peace. So you have to be, be aware that there's people that maybe want to be alone at the time, want to just be peaceful at that moment and don't want interaction. Just, you have to build your awareness towards people's time and peace, their property, property, and uh, that's it. A, a stea is not too difficult of a one, but you have to remember it's not just items. It's 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 feelings, it's emotions, it's states of being. And I forgot to say in the beginning of the video, but we can do it now since you know maybe a little more. Take your pen and paper, uh, pencil, paper, whatever, and write what you think about Estea. What not stealing means to you. How you work that into your life. And remember, not just stealing from stores, but how do you not steal from uh, people that live with you? Have it be a partner, parents, roommates. How do you give them their space? Another thing I'd like to... Uh, it's not just, to go back to the item part, it's not just stealing physical items like, ooh, I stole this pen from Holiday Inn. Well, they give them out. I didn't, I don't know if it, they consider that stealing, but whatever. I guess technically I may have. But it's also, if someone lets you borrow something and they say they need it back in a week, well, you have to make sure that you get it back to them in a week. Keeping something longer than, the, than was agreed upon is still a type of stealing and goes under a stea. Also using something that the person lets you borrow not for the uh, operation that it was meant for, 
that's a bit of stealing too. Or it comes under a stale also. Wish I could think of a good example. Oh, someone lets you borrow a knife. Your neighbor, say, because you needed one to cut some vegetables or whatnot. Now you have this sharp knife and you decide, oh, I'm going to clean the cracks in my floor or something. Ah, that's not practicing a stale. Just use that knife for what that person intended you to do and cut your vegetables and leave it at that. If you need to, if you need to clean your cracks, use your own knife or get something else. Go take a pen from Holiday Inn and clean the cracks out with it. So let's stay uh, non-stealing. Thank you.